Oriel Park at Camden Yards, often referred to simply as Camden Yards or Oriel Park, is a Major League Baseball MLB ballpark located in Baltimore, Maryland. Home to the Baltimore Orioles, it is the first of the retro Major League ballparks constructed during the 1990s and early 2000s, and remains one of the most highly praised. It was completed in 1992 to replace Memorial Stadium. The park is situated in downtown Baltimore, a few blocks west of the Inner Harbor in the Camden Yards Sports Complex. The Orioles celebrated the ballpark's 20th anniversary during the 2012 season and launched the website CamdenYards20.com as part of the celebration. Historically, Oriole Park at Camden Yards is one of several venues that have carried the Oriole Park name for various Baltimore franchises over the years. History Construction Prior to Camden Yards, the predominant design trend of big league ballparks was the symmetrical, multipurpose stadium. Memorial Stadium, the Orioles' home since they moved from St. Louis in 1954, was an early example of such a design. In 1984, the Baltimore Colts moved to Indianapolis Indiana Park because Baltimore and Maryland officials refused to commit money for a replacement for Memorial Stadium. Not wanting to risk losing the Orioles and Baltimore's status as a major league city in its own right city and state officials immediately began planning a new park in order to keep them in town. The master plan was designed by international design firm RTKL. The stadium design was completed by the architectural firm HOK Sport now Populous, which had pioneered retro ballparks on the minor league level four years earlier with Pilot Field in Buffalo, New York. HOK Sport's original design was very similar to the new Comiskey Park. However, at the urging of architectural consultant Janet Marie Smith, the Orioles turned it down, preferring a retro-style park. Construction began in 1989, and lasted 33 months. Former Orioles owner Eli Jacobs favored naming the new field Oriole Park, while then Maryland Governor William Donald Schaefer favored Camden Yards. After considerable debate a compromise was reached to use both names. 1992–2008 The ballpark opened on April 6, 1992 with the Orioles hosting the Cleveland Indians. The great success of Camden Yards sparked a trend in the construction of more traditional, fan-friendly ballparks in downtown locations across the U.S. Indeed, by the 2012 season, all but two teams the Toronto Blue Jays and Oakland Athletics played in baseball-only parks. The first run scored at Camden Yards occurred when Chris Hoyles hit a ground rule double that brought in Sam Horn. The Orioles went on to win the game 2-0 on Rick Sutcliffe's shutout. Camden Yards hosted the 1993 MLB All-Star Game. On June 18, 1994, an escalator accident injured 43 people. One of the stadium's multiple-story escalators, overcrowded with fans heading to their upper deck seats, jerked backward, throwing passengers to the bottom landing. On September 6, 1995, Camden Yards witnessed Cal Ripken Jr.'s record-setting 2,131st consecutive game. Exactly one year later, Eddie Murray blasted his 500th home run there. Two orange seats stand out from the park's dark green plastic chairs. One, located at section 96 row 7, seat 23 in the right center field bleachers officially known as the Utah Street Reserve sections, commemorates the spot where Murray's 500th home run landed. The other, Section 86, Row FF, Seat 10 in the left field bleachers, was the landing spot for Ripken's 278th home run as a shortstop, breaking Chicago Cubs legend Ernie Banks' record for the position. That home run was hit on July 15, 1993. Ripken finished his career with 345 home runs as a shortstop and 431 overall. Topic renovations After the 2008 season, a new HD video display and scoreboard were installed below the right field bleachers. A new, high-fidelity sound reinforcement system was added around the ballpark in 2009. The Orioles made numerous improvements to their home ballpark and to their spring training facility, Ed Smith Stadium, before the start of the 2011 season. All seats in the lower seating bowl were replaced and drink rails were added in the club level. Several skyboxes were also eliminated and refurbished to make room for more party suites and casual luxury boxes. 
The renovation reduced Oriel Park's capacity from 48,876 to 45,971, making it more comparable with newer ballparks. During the 2011–12 off-season, the Orioles announced further upgrades to Camden Yards in preparation for the 20th anniversary of the park's opening. These improvements included the expansion of concession food choices, widening of the concourses in the upper deck, the installation of a replica of the B&O warehouse's original canopy, and the addition of a lounge atop the batter's eye in center field, which had been previously been inaccessible to fans. The lounge would contain a restaurant and have bar style and casual deck seating where fans could watch the game. The team also announced that cast bronze statues of all the Oriole Baseball Hall of Famers would be erected in the picnic area beyond the bullpens in left center field. Furthermore, the right field wall would be lowered from 25 feet to 21 feet to improve the view of the field from Utah Street. Topic B&O Warehouse The stadium planners incorporated the warehouse into the architecture of the ballpark experience rather than demolish or truncate it. The floors of the warehouse contain offices, service spaces, and a private club. The warehouse has been hit by a ball only once, by Ken Griffey Jr. during the home run derby of the 1993 MLB All-Star Game. Topic Utah Street Utah Street, between the stadium and the warehouse, is closed to vehicular traffic. Along this street, spectators can get a view of the game or visit the many shops and restaurants that line the thoroughfare, including former Oriole star Boog Powell's outdoor barbecue stand. On game days, pedestrians must have a ticket in order to walk on the part of Utah Street adjacent to the stadium, however, on non-game days the street is open to all, while access to the stadium is gated. Sections 90-98, called Utah Street Palace, are located not in the stadium, but adjacent to Utah Street, with the seats descending toward the outfield below. If a game sells out, fans may purchase reduced price standing room only tickets, which entitle them to enter Utah Street and watch the game from two designated standing areas in LF bullpen area or above scoreboard in RF. Many home run balls have landed on Utah Street, and the Orioles organization has marked the spots with small baseball shaped bronze plaques embedded in the street, though it sometimes takes up to a year for each homer to get a plaque. The first home run to reach Utah Street was hit by Mickey Tettleton of the Detroit Tigers on April 20, 1992. The most recent home run to land on Utah Street was a shot by Greg Bird of the New York Yankees on July 11, 2018. As of July 11, 2018, 97 home runs have landed on Utah Street in stadium history. The June 29, 2012 game against the Cleveland Indians was only the second time multiple home runs have landed on Utah Street in a single game. The first occurrence was during the April 11, 1997 game against the Texas Rangers when Rafael Palmero hit two home runs which landed on Utah Street. The single-season record for home runs landing on Utah Street is 8, set in 2008. Topic. Blocked skyline views In 2007–08 construction started on two large buildings beyond the stadium's outfield walls. A 757-room Hilton Baltimore Hotel north of the stadium occupying a two-city block area and a high-rise apartment building, both completed in 2009 which have blocked views of the city's skyline from most sections of the grandstand. The Baltimore Sun said on April 21, 2008, There's just a glimpse of the Bromo Seltzer Tower's crenellated top just to the right of the new Hilton Baltimore Convention Center Hotel. Something's drastically different at Oriole Park this year. The sweeping view of downtown Baltimore that fans have enjoyed for the past 16 seasons has changed considerably. Sports writer Peter Schmuck complained, The big, antiseptic convention hotel looms over Camden Yards and has blocked out the best part of the Baltimore skyline. A Washington Post columnist called it a cruel cubist joke on a previously perfect ballpark, although others said they were pleased with new construction downtown as indicative of urban revitalization. Notable events Topic. Notable games September 6, 1995, Cal Ripken Jr. broke Lou Gehrig's record of 2,130 consecutive games played, and hit a home run during that game. 
Attendees included President Bill Clinton, Vice President Al Gore, Joe DiMaggio, and Cal Ripken Sr. September 6, 1996, Eddie Murray hit his 500th career home run exactly one year after Cal Ripken Jr. broke Lou Gehrig's consecutive game streak. October 15, 1997, the Cleveland Indians win Game 6 of the 1997 ALCS 1–0 in 11 innings to win the series 4–2 and advance to the 1997 World Series. To date, this is the closest the Orioles have been to hosting a World Series in Camden Yards, with the last one occurring 14 years before, when they were still playing at Memorial Stadium. May 3, 1999, the Cuban national baseball team defeats the Orioles 12-6 in the second game of a two-game exhibition series. April 4, 2001, Hideo Nomo pitched the first no-hitter in the history of Camden Yards, walking three and striking out 11. October 4, 2001, Tim Raines Sr. played left field and Tim Raines Jr. played center field, in the 5-4 loss to the Boston Red Sox becoming only the second father-son duo to play in the same game. Ken Griffey Sr. and Ken Griffey Jr. were the only other father-son duo to do so with the Seattle Mariners, on August 31, 1990. October 6, 2001, Cal Ripken Jr.'s final MLB game. Former President Bill Clinton and MLB Commissioner Bud Selig were in attendance. August 22, 2007, the Texas Rangers beat the Orioles 30-3 in Game 1 of a doubleheader, the highest scoring game in 110 years. May 31, 2008, Manny Ramirez of the Boston Red Sox hits his 500th home run in a game against the Orioles. June 30, 2009, the Orioles rallied to score 10 runs against the Red Sox after facing a 10-1 deficit in the seventh inning, breaking the franchise record for the largest comeback, and the Major League Baseball record for the largest comeback by a last-place team over a first-place team. September 28, 2011, the Orioles defeated the Boston Red Sox in the final day of the season with a 3-4 walk-off win. The loss, coupled with the Tampa Bay Rays 8-7 victory over the New York Yankees at Tropicana Field minutes later, eliminated the Red Sox from postseason contention. The Red Sox became the first team in baseball history to miss the postseason after leading by as many as nine games for a playoff spot entering the month of September. May 8, 2012, Josh Hamilton tied the Major League Baseball record for home runs in a game with four. He went five for five with four home runs and one double. April 29, 2015, as a result of the 2015 Baltimore riots, the game against the White Sox was closed to the public, the first time that has ever happened in MLB history. Topic ballpark First's topic Design and features Camden Yards was built on land that once served as the rail yard for the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad's Camden Station. The view from much of the park is dominated by the former B&O warehouse behind the right field wall. Some seats in the stadium have a good view of the downtown Baltimore skyline. The bullpen area was designed after many write-in designs were submitted by the public. Its unique two-tiered design was a first in major league parks. A picnic area is located above and behind the bullpens. Rows of picnic tables covered by orange umbrellas are available for fans to sit and eat. Many trees are located there, too. Many fans at home games view the game from behind the railing behind the bullpens. Until the 2012 season, the Mid-Atlantic Sports Network's pre- and post-game shows before Orioles' home games were televised in an outdoor studio behind the bullpens. Bronze sculptures of the six Orioles greats whose uniform numbers were retired by the ball club were unveiled individually in the walking zone of the area behind the bullpens throughout the 2012 season. The statues were created by Antonio Tobias Mendez and cast at the locally based New Arts Foundry. On the street there is a statue of Babe Ruth entitled, Babe's Dream, created in 1996 by sculptor Susan Lurie. In the same courtyard, one will find sculptures indicating the retired jersey numbers of the Baltimore Orioles. The stadium is the first major league park to have an outfield wall made up entirely of straight wall segments since Ebbets Field. The playing field is 16 feet below street level. The stadium contains 4,631 club seats and 72 luxury suites. Every seat in the ballpark is green, except for two, one in left field which marks the spot of Cal Ripken's 278th career home run, breaking Ernie Banks' all-time record among shortstops, and one in right field, which marks the spot of Eddie Murray's 500th career home run. 
Topic seating capacity topic Ballparks influenced by Camden Yards Camden Yards lights spell out Go Orioles all throughout the month of September. Since its opening day in 1992, Camden Yards was a success and fan favorite. Attendance jumped from an average of 25,722 over the last 10 years of Memorial Stadium's tenure to an average of 43,490 over the first 10 years of Camden Yards' existence. Due to its success, many other cities built traditional feeling asymmetrical ballparks with modern amenities such as skyboxes in a downtown setting. Many of these stadiums, like Camden Yards, incorporate retro features in the stadium exteriors as well as interiors. These parks have been dubbed retro classic parks. Other parks, known as retro modern parks, have combined retro interiors with more modern exterior elements. The park also ended a quarter-century trend of multipurpose stadiums in which baseball and football teams shared the same stadium. Although intended to cut costs, the fundamentally different sizes and shapes of baseball and football fields made this concept fundamentally inadequate for either sport. By the 2012 season, all but two teams played in baseball-only parks. Retro classic parks include, Globe Life Park in Arlington in Arlington, Texas 1994, Coors Field in Denver 1995, AT&T Park in San Francisco 2000, Comerica Park in Detroit 2000, PNC Park in Pittsburgh 2001, Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia 2004, Bush Stadium in St. Louis 2006, City Field in Queens, New York City 2009, New Yankee Stadium in the Bronx, New York City 2009, Guaranteed Rate Field in Chicago 1991-2011. This park opened in 1991 as the last of the so-called modern ballparks. It was heavily renovated from 2001 to 2011 into a retro classic park. Retro modern parks include Progressive Field in Cleveland, 1994; Angel Stadium of Anaheim in Anaheim, 1966–1998; Angel Stadium opened in 1966 as a modern park. From 1979 to 1980, it was converted into a multipurpose park shared with the NFL's Los Angeles Rams. After the Rams moved to St. Louis after the 1994 NFL season, the stadium was extensively renovated a second time from 1996 to 1998, with the most significant change being the removal of almost all of the seats added for football. The final result was a retro-modern park. Chase Field in Phoenix 1998, Safeco Field in Seattle 1999, Minute Maid Park in Houston 2000, Miller Park in Milwaukee 2001, Great American Ball Park in Cincinnati 2003, Petco Park in San Diego 2004, Nationals Park in Washington D.C. 2008, Target Field in Minneapolis 2010, SunTrust Park in Cumberland, Georgia 2017, Marlins Park in Miami opened in 2012 was the first since Camden Yards not classified as a retro park, whether of the classic or modern variety. Marlins owner Jeffrey Loria specifically rejected the retro model for the new park, desiring a facility that reflected the 21st century culture of Miami. Populous, which designed both Camden Yards and Marlins Park, was willing to listen. The lead designer for Marlins Park would later say the company was waiting for a client willing to break the retro mold. Stadium planners are labeling Marlins Park the first example of contemporary architecture in MLB. Topic Non-baseball events On October 8, 1995, Pope John Paul II celebrated Mass at Camden Yards as part of his visit to Baltimore, one of the most prominent non-baseball events at Camden Yards. Topic awards and recognitions In March 2013 Oriole Park was named the number 3 ballpark in the U.S. by TripAdvisor. Topic attendance Between 1992-2000, the Orioles averaged more than 40,000 spectators per game, with a total attendance of 3.71 million persons in the 1997 season. Since then, attendance has declined to 1.9 million in the 2009 season. The current single-game highest attendance record at Camden Yards is 49,828, set on July 10, 2005 against the Boston Red Sox. On April 12, 2010, the low attendance mark was set, when just 9,129 fans watched the Orioles play the Tampa Bay Rays. On April 29, 2015, Camden Yards was practically empty after the riots in Baltimore over Freddie Gray. Only two scouts, one scoreboard display operator, and the players showed up to watch, and official attendance was zero. 
This marks the first time in MLB history that the public was not permitted to attend a baseball game. On August 19, 2008, the stadium hosted its 50 millionth fan, a milestone reached in just 17 seasons, the fastest park in baseball history to reach such a figure. Since opening in 1992, Oriole Park has hosted the third most number of fans in Major League Baseball, exceeded only by Dodger Stadium and the first Yankee Stadium. Topic access and transportation On the far side of the B&O warehouse is the present Camden Station, served by both the Baltimore Light Rail and Mark Commuter Rail. The latter rail line provides direct service to Washington, D.C., and the former to BWI Airport. The light rail service began around the time the stadium opened. The stadium is located in downtown Baltimore, near the Inner Harbor. The ballpark, along with the adjacent M&T Bank Stadium, home of the Baltimore Ravens of the National Football League, make up the Camden Yards Sports Complex, though Camden Yards generally refers to only the baseball stadium. The football stadium was not built until 1998, the Ravens' third season in existence. Camden Yards is just a short walk from Babe Ruth's birthplace, which is now a museum. According to some sources, Ruth's father once owned a pub located in what is now center field of the stadium. In May 2005, a new sports museum, the Sports Legends Museum at Camden Yards, opened in Camden Station. It lasted only 10 years, closing on October 12, 2015. Topic in popular culture The movie Dave 1993 features a scene with the President of the United States, played by Kevin Kline, throwing out the first pitch at Camden Yards. That scene was filmed in front of an actual capacity crowd at the ballpark, prior to a regular season game in early August 1992. Similar scenes were filmed for the Chris Rock movie Head of State, for the Gina Davis TV series Commander-in-Chief, and for the 2004 season finale of The West Wing. A short clip in the 2005 film Wedding Crashers shows Oriole Park at Camden Yards. The movie Major League Two used Camden Yards as the home of the Indians. Part of the sixth season premiere of the NBC police drama series Homicide, Life on the Street was filmed at Camden Yards. In these scenes, the detectives must hurry to solve a murder at Camden Yards before a game between the Orioles and the New York Yankees ends. The pilot of the HBO 2009 comedy series Eastbound and Down begins with an aerial shot of Camden Yards, however, when actor Danny McBride takes the mound, the field-level shot is at a different ballpark. A portion of an episode of the HBO series The Wire, a show about police officers and drug dealers in Baltimore, was filmed during an actual Orioles game in which characters Jimmy McNulty and Bunk Moreland, played by Dominic West and Wendell Pierce, take their sons to a game while discussing a case. House of Cards features Vice President of the United States Frank Underwood Kevin Spacey throwing out a ceremonial first pitch at Camden Yards. Spacey, a noted Orioles fan who actually threw a real ceremonial first pitch against the Blue Jays a season ago, is first seen wearing a jacket featuring the cartoon bird in the tunnel to the team dugout as he is being introduced to the crowd. Former closer Jim Johnson and outfielder Nate McClouth meet Spacey's character on the field, with Johnson expecting to receive the pitch as the stadium lights suddenly go out. For added realism, the crowd even yells, oh, during the national anthem. Topic references Topic External links Stadium site on Orioles. Com Ballpark Digest Visit to Oriole Park at Camden Yards Summary of Camden Yards Technical information on Camden Yards Camden Yards images and information Top 10 ballparks by Men's Fitness <laughs>